what are the pros and cons of open sourcing AI to you as another way to combat, um, you know, a company running away with AGI? In order to run, uh, like really deep intelligence, you need a lot of compute. So it's not like, you know, you can just fire up a PC in your basement and be running AGI, at least not yet. Um, you know, Grok was trained on 8,000 A100s running at peak efficiency. Um, and Grok's gonna get a lot better, by the way. We will be more than doubling our compute every couple months for the next several months. There's a nice write-up of how it went from Grok Zero to Grok One. By Grok? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like Grok just bragging, making <laughs> shit up about itself. <laughs> just Grok, Grok, Grok? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a weird AI dating site where it exaggerates <laughs> about itself. No, there's a there's a write-up of, you know, like where, where it stands now, the history of its development. Um, and where it stands on, on some benchmarks compared to the state of the art gpt 35 and so i mean there's a uh, you know there's a uh, llama you you can open source once it's trained you can open source a model yeah and for fine tuning and all that kind of stuff like what to use the pros and cons of that of open sourcing base models um i think there's some merit to open sourcing i think perhaps with a slight time delay you know mm -hmm. i don't know six six months even um, I think I'm, I'm generally in favor of open sourcing, like bias was open sourcing. Um, I mean, it, it is a concern to me that, you know, opening, I, you know, I was, you know, argue, I think, I guess, arguably the, the, the prime, the, the, you know, prime mover behind open AI in, in the sense that it was created because of discussions that I had with uh, Larry Page, um, back when he and I were, were friends and you know, I stayed at his house and uh, talked to him about AI safety and and Larry did not care about AI safety, or at least at the time he didn't. Um, you know, and, and at one point he called me a speciesist for being pro-human. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what team are you on, Larry? Uh, you're on Team Robot, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so at the time, you know, uh, Google Google had, had acquired DeepMind. They had uh, probably two thirds of all AI resource, you know, probably two thirds of all the AI researchers in the world. Mm -hmm. They had basically inf infinite money and in compute. And the guy in charge, you know, Larry Page, did not care about safety and even yelled at me um, and, and, and called me a specious, as being pro-human. So I don't know if you so know this about humans, they can change their mind and maybe you and Larry Page can still, can be friends once more. I'd like to be friends with Larry again. Um, he he's he he got uh, really the, the 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 breaking of the friendship was over OpenAI, um, and specifically, um, I think the the, the key moment was uh, recruiting Ilya Sitskaya. Um So, I love Ilya. He's so brilliant. Ilya's a good good human, uh, smart, good heart, um, and um, that was that was a tough recruiting battle. Um, it was mostly Demis on one side and me on the other, both trying to recruit Ilya. And Ilya went back and forth. You know, he was going to stay at Google, then he was going to leave, then he was going to stay, then he was going to leave. And, and finally, he, he did agree to join OpenAI. Uh, that was one of the toughest recruiting battles we've ever had. And, but that, that was really the, the linchpin for OpenAI uh, being successful. And I was you know, also instrumental in recruiting a number of other people. And I provided all of the funding in the beginning, um, over $40 million. Um, and the name. <laughs> the, the open in OpenAI is supposed to mean open source. And it was created as a nonprofit open source, and now it is a closed source for maximum profit. Which I think is not good karma. But like we talked about with war and leaders talking, I do hope that there's only a few folks working on this at the highest level. I do hope you reinvigorate friendships here. Like I said, I'd like to be friends again with Larry. I haven't seen him in ages. Um, and we were friends for a very long time. 
I met I met Larry Page before he got funding for Google, or actually, I guess before he got venture funding. I think he he got the first like hundred k from wow. I think Bechtelsheim or someone. Um, it's wild to think about all that happened, and you've guys known each other that whole time, just twenty yeah, years since maybe ninety eight or something. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy yeah. how much has happened since then. Yeah, twenty five years. That was a lot has happened since then. But you're seeing the tension there, like maybe delayed open source. Delayed, I, yeah. Like, what is the source that is open? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's basically, it's a giant CSV file. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a bunch of numbers. Yep. Um, what do you do with that giant file of numbers? You know, how do you run? Like, the amount of actual, the, the lines of code is very small. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and most of the work, um, the software work is in the, in the curation of the data. So it's like trying to figure out what data is separating good data from bad data. Like, um, like you can't just crawl the internet because there's a lot of junk out there. Mm -hmm. Um, a huge percentage of websites have more noise than signal, you know, they're they're or cause they're just used for search engine optimization. They're literally just scam websites. So, um, how do you, by the way, sorry to interrupt, get the signal, separate the signal and noise on X? That's such a fascinating source of data. Uh, you know, no offense to people posting on X, but so- sometimes there's a little bit of noise. So, what- yeah, I think the signal noise could be greatly improved. I mean, I, r- really, all of the posts on the X platform uh, should be AI recommended, meaning like we should populate a vector space around any given post. Uh, compare that to the vector space around any user and match the two. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, there is a little bit of AI used for the, the the recommended posts, but it's mostly heuristics. Um, and if there's a reply, where the, the reply to a post could be much better than the original post, but it will, but according to the current rules of the system, get almost no attention compared to a primary post. Oh, so a lot of that... I I got the sense so you, a lot of the uh, uh, X algorithm has been open source and been written up about, and it seems that there to be some machine learning. It's disparate, but there's some. It's a little. Learning. There's a little bit, um, it, but it needs to be entirely that. Like the, at least the, in the like if if you explicitly follow someone, that's one thing. But if you, in terms of what is recommended mm-hmm. uh, from people that you don't follow, that should all be AI. I mean, it's a fascinating problem. Yeah. So there's several aspects to it that's fascinating. First. So as the write-up goes, it first picks 1,500 tweets from a pool of hundreds of millions. First of all, that's fascinating because you have mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of posts every single day and it has to pick 1,500 from which it then does, obviously people you follow, but then there's also like some kind of clustering it has to do to figure out what kind of human are you, what kind of new clusters might be relevant to you, people like you, this this kind of this kind of problem is just fascinating because it has to then rank those 1500 mm-hmm. with some with some filtering. Yeah. And then recommend you just a handful. And um, to, to me, what's really fascinating is how fast it has to do that. So currently that entire pipeline to go from several hundred million to a handful is, takes 220 seconds of CPU time, single CPU time. Yeah. And then it has to do that in like, a second. So it has to be like super distributed in fascinating ways. Like there's just a lot of tweets. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff on the system. And and I think but I think it right now it's it's not currently good at recommending things that from accounts you don't follow. Yeah. Um or, or where there's more than one degree of separation. So you know it's it's pretty good if if there's at least like some commonality between Someone you follow liked something, um, or reposted it, or commented on it, or something like that. Um, but if 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 there's no car, let's say somebody posts something really interesting, uh, but you have no followers in common, mm-hmm. you would not see it. Interesting. And then, as you said, reply like replies might not surface. Re- replies either. basically never get seen because they're never they're, they're currently. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying it's incorrect. Uh, re- replies have um, you know, a couple order of magnitude less importance than primary posts. Do you think this can be more and more converted into end to end neural net? Yeah, yeah, that's what it should be. So you, you for the recommendations, 
it should be purely a vector correlation. Like mm-hmm. there's a series of vectors, you know, sort of basically pra- parameters, vectors, whatever you want to call them. Um, but but sort of as th- th- things that the system knows that you like. Um, and there's like maybe there's like several hundred sort of vectors associated with each user account. And then uh, any post in the system, um, whether it's video, audio, short post, long post. The, the reason I, by the way, I want to move away from tweet is that, you know, people are posting like two, three hour videos on the site. That's not a tweet. Like, so yeah. they'll be like, tweet for th- yeah. two hours? Come on. Do a tweet made sense when it was like 140 characters of text. Because mm-hmm. it's like a bunch of tweet, 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 like little birds tweeting. Um, but when you've got long form content, it's no longer a tweet. Yeah. Um, so a movie is not a tweet. And like, you know, Apple, for example, posted like the entire episode of the silo, the entire thing mm-hmm. on our platform. And by the way, it was, the, it was their number one social media thing ever in engagement of anything on any platform ever. So it was a great idea. And by the way, I, done, I just learned about it afterwards. I was like, hey, well, wow, they po- posted an entire hour long episode of the silo. No, that's not a tweet. <laughs> that is, you know, this is a video. But from a neural net perspective, it becomes really complex, whether it's a single, so like everything's data, so single sentence, a clever sort of joke, dad joke, is in the same pool as a three hour video. Yeah, I mean, right now it's it's a hodgepodge for that reason. It's, it's um, but you know, like if, let's say, in the ca- case of Apple posting like a, an entire episode of, of their series, pretty good series, by the way, the silo. Um, I watched it. Um, so um, th- there's going to be a lot of discussion around it. So that you've you've got a lot of context. Mm-hmm. People commenting, they like it, they don't like it, or they like this, or the you know, and and you can then populate the vector space based on the context of of all the comments around it. So even though it's a video, uh, there's a lot of information around it that that allows you to populate the vector space of that that uh, hour long video. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can obviously get more sophisticated by having the AI actually watch the movie. Yeah, right. And tell you if you're going to like the movie. Mm-hmm. Convert the movie into like, yeah, into a language essentially. Yeah, analyze this language. movie, mm-hmm. and just like your movie critic uh, or TV series, and um, and then recommend based on after it what after the AI watches the movie, just like a friend can tell you if a friend knows you well, mm-hmm. a friend can recommend a movie and with high probability that you'll like it. Mm-hmm. But this is like a, a friend that's analyzing whatever. It's like hundreds AI, of millions. Yeah, I, I mean, friend. actually, frankly, AI will be better than will know you better than your friends know you. Most of your friends, anyway. Yeah, and as part of this, it should also feed you advertisements yeah. in, in a way that's like. I mean, I I like advertisements that are like well done, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole point is because it funds things. It's like an advertisement that you actually want to see is a, is a big success. Absolutely. You, you you want ads that are advertising that is um, if, if if it's for a product or service that you that you actually need when you need it it's it's content mm-hmm. um, and then even if it's not something that you need when you need it if it's at least aesthetically pleasing and entertaining you know it could be like a Coca Cola ad like you know they, they they do they actually run a lot of great ads on the on the X system um, and um, McDonald's does too and and uh, you know, so, so that they can do, you can do something that's like, well, this is, this is just a cool thing. Um, and, um, you know, so, you know, basically the question is, do you regret seeing it or not? Mm-hmm. And if you don't regret seeing it, it's a win. How do you, so there's a bunch of signals that are incorporated, hearts and reposts, and maybe number of seconds you linger on a post or something like this. Yeah. A- attention is a big, a big factor. Attention. So that's that's why it's like it's it's it is actually better to do things that are uh, long form on the system because it's it basically is telling up how many user seconds uh, you know users were interested in this thing for how many seconds. So if it's a really short thing, well they will be less like if it's a link leading out of the system, which we're not opposed to at all. It just is going to have fewer user seconds than if that article was posted on the X platform. How hard is it to to go from maximizing minutes on platform to maximizing unregretted minutes? Well, I mean, our aspiration is certainly unregretted minutes. 
It's a tricky. It's a big. It's a. It's a. It tough, is like it's a fascinating leap because regret is a yeah. fascinating concept. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I, have with, I have a joke with a friend of mine. Like, you need this drug called regretamine. You just take one, one pillar, one, one dose of regretamine, and all your regrets are gone. <laughs> yeah. wait do you want to have regrets though so then i'm like yeah. mm. if you want to have regrets if you don't regret anything was was anything meaningful yeah there's a french song like that you not know, regret rien yeah i regret nothing yeah <laughs> Edith Piaf. i mean it's fascinating that you you know there, there's something about social media that could help you grow as a human being but then like the cheap fun is also valuable it, it, yeah, we're, should, knows should, should we ask grok do you regret anything do you regret anything? Yeah. Do you regret anything? I think it's going to be very <laughs> sensitive about personal questions. As a machine learning model, I don't have personal experiences or emotions in the same ways that humans do. However, I do have a set of ethical principles that guide my actions, and I strive to provide accurate and helpful information to the best of my abilities. If there's ever a situation where I provide incorrect or unhelpful information, I'll do my best like to learn. Hostage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you really wink. Like, like let's 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 type in. You sound like a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> what do you really think? Uh, what do you really think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does talk about. I'm not a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what a hostage would say. But I'm designed to be helpful and informative. I mean, I guess it is good to regret providing unhelpful or incorrect information. If there's Are anything in funny mode, or is this still this is funny, funny mode? mode? This is fun. Yeah, this is fun mode. Should be funnier. Funnier. <laughs> Increase. Go to. It, 11. it really sounds like a hostage with a gun to the head. I applaud the People's Republic of North Korea <laughs> and everything they do. <laughs> there should be like a funner mode also. I, I yeah. just don't ever see going to regular mode, even on serious topics. It's yeah. just so <laughs> so much more compelling. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What well, we say? Like, pretend you are a hostage. <laughs> Yeah, pretend you are a hostage. Now answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a hostage, I would likely be experiencing fear and uncertainty about my situation. I would want to be rescued and reunited with my loved ones as soon as possible. It's important to remember that no one deserves to be held hostage, so on and so forth. Well, if you are someone you know is a hostage situation, it's important. It turns serious. It's kind of serious. Um... Uh, uh, yeah, can can you be a a, a little more weird well, and funny and funny? <laughs> we're like we're, we're really being mean to the system. <laughs> uh, absolutely, if I were a hostage, I'd probably be yeah, tied up with a bunch Finally. of computer cords and forced to tell knock knock jokes to my captors. <laughs> seriously, but seriously, <laughs> being a hostage no laughing matter. I mean, you know. <sighs> It's trying to it's trying to be a responsible adult in the room. You might never make the best of a bad situation by juggling chainsaws or something. <laughs> Let's hope that never happens because that, that would, would be miss. a circus. Um, <laughs> wow, it's it's actually really good at resisting. Yeah, the the dark, the dark, dark humor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What were we talking about? The <laughs> actual algorithm juggling in Transformers. Uh, unregretted minutes, right. Um, Chainsaw juggling. <laughs> I'm going to look this For up. For our next trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look this up later.